Adam. Every human being has dignity, and that's, that's an Islamic belief. And the Prophet ﷺ taught that when he stood up for the Jew in the, in the funeral, when they were bringing the Jew by. And this was a time when the Muslims and the Jews were, were at it. They weren't, you know, it wasn't a peaceful time. Um, but when, the, when, when the, the funeral came by, the Prophet stood up and one of the Sahaba said, it's a Jew. It's in Sahih al-Bukhari. You know, and it's, it's sad how some of the commentators try to, like, erase that meaning, you know, by giving, you know, really, I think, uh, you know, just really crazy interpretations. But, but the Prophet said, awalaysat nafsa, isn't it a soul? And, and that's why the ulama that I think got it right said, he stood up to acknowledge a soul returning to its Lord, irrespective of what the pers persona, you know, because religion is personality, right? You know, Islam, we're Muslims, alhamdulillah, but who's really a Muslim? You know, it, the, 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 the haqiqah of Islam, the reality of Islam is very different from the sociological box that you check when it asks you what religion you adhere to. You know, you put your little box there. But are you, hal antum muslimun? You know, Allah says that to the Muslims. Are you Muslims? And that question is about your haqiqah. It's not about outward forms. You know, there's lots of people, everybody can perform the outward things of Islam. You, you can pray, you can fast, you can pay your zakat, you can do all those things. But is your inner reality a Muslim reality, which is a human being in total submission to the divine will? That's another thing. And, that, and that's why religion is more about personality than reality. So when I say I'm a Muslim, or you say you're a Muslim, you're talking about you know, a certain set of social circumstances and a certain set of outward practices that you might or might not adhere to. If it's social circumstances, you're a Muslim because you were born in Karachi. And there's a lot of people, that's the extent of their Islam. They were born in Cairo and they were told they're Muslims and that was it. But they haven't really ever entered into a state of real Islam with their Lord. And then there's most of us who are struggling with that, like that wonderful title to that book, Struggling to Surrender. You know, because it is a struggle to surrender to the will of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So uh, the Prophet was honoring the soul stripped of the personality. Because the Jew is the personality, the Muslim is the personality, the Christian is the personality. And these personalities, I mean, we had an experience down here. It was so I was with my wife and we went down here. And, these guys were, I thought, downright belligerent, you know. But the point is, whatever, whatever upset them, whether it was my wife's hijab or, you know, or whatever, or they thought we were Muslims and, and, and I'm supposed to have angry feelings towards Muslims or I'm supposed to have angry feelings towards Jews because right now Palestine and Israel is a mess. Do you know what I mean? So I'm supposed to have these feelings towards these people because, but in the end of the day, if you just strip away that personality, they're just flesh and blood, we're flesh and blood, they have souls, we have souls, right? And that, trying to get to that is such a hard place to get to. And that's where the Prophet was at, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. He did not see people as evil. He saw people as divine potential. When he looked at people, he saw their potential. And that's why in the, if you look in the, in the, in the verse in Surah Al-Nahl, it ends with this, the B, which is so beautiful that the Qur'an has, you know, they, 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 the, the Mushrikun said, what is this book? You know, it has Ankabut and Nahal and Namal, you know, like ants and, <laughs> and spiders and you know, they just thought that was so strange, but, and bees. But now we know all these, what these things are. You know, spiders, they're controlling all the, you know, we'd be, have a room filled with flies without spiders. It's all, you know, they're doing this. And then bees are pollinating all the, you know, they're pollinating all the, uh, all the food. Most of the food we eat is pollinated by bees. 
But at the end, if you say, ادعو إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة You know, call to the way of your Lord with wisdom والموعدة الحسنة And exhort them in a, in a beautiful way You know, don't be, don't be harsh لو كنت فضا غريض القلب لم فض من حولك You know, if you were hard and harsh-hearted People would flee from around you So it says, call with wisdom and with a goodly exhortion And then it says, وجادرهم بالتي أحسن and and debate with them in the best way, in the most beautiful way. And then it says that Inna Rabbaka a'namu biman dalla an sabilihi, wa huwa a'namu bil muhtadin. Your Lord knows who's guided, and He knows who's astray. Right. In other words, just call to your Lord. Don't don't assume that you know who you're talking to. You know, don't assume that. This person's a kafir, which is why the ta'yeen al-kufr is haram in sharia. You know, ta'yeen al-kufr is haram. The ulama say that. This is in the books of aqidah. You cannot say that an individual is a kafir. Because kafir, you're saying that they're mukhalid fin nar. Right? That, they, you know, they're hellbound. And you can't say that about anybody. So you can talk about, you know, these people, kuffar, but specific people, you don't know what people's reality is, and that's what da'wah is about. But then, you know, when aqabtum fa'aqibu bimithri ma'uqibtum bi. You know, if you have to redress wrongs, redress them in the best, you know, in the most just way. Don't don't transgress. When you redress, don't don't transgress. So if somebody kills you, don't go kill their cousin. You know, I mean, so if somebody kills your, you know, one of your tribe members, right? So if, 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 you know, if, if one Hindu kills a Muslim, you don't go out and find any Hindu to kill them, right? That's, there's people that do that. You know, one, one part of the group does something to another part. So they go find anybody from that group. That's transgression. This is not justice. That's vengeance. There's a difference between justice and vengeance. And then it says, وَلَيْنْ صَبَرْتُ لَهُ خَيْرُ لِلصَّابِرِينَ But if you're patient, it's better to show patience. You know, it's better than, if, than redressing the wrong, than, you know, going out. But then it says, وَصْبِرْ You know, you be patient. So like, the, the ummah, it said, you know, if you want to redress your wrongs, do it, but be just in it. But it's better to be patient. But then it says, but you... Prophet ﷺ, you have to be patient. You don't have an option here. Because he's the exemplar, and the exemplar has to embody the highest example. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ, when he looked at people, he did not look at them with contempt. Nobody. He had no contempt for people. He had no kibber. There was no pride in his heart. When the man said to him, he asked him about the sandals, and, and he said, um, you know, I love to wear nice sandals and I like a nice shirt. Is that arrogance? The Prophet said, In Allah Jamilun Yahib al Jamal. God is beautiful and He loves beauty. In other words, the thing that you love, the fact that you like beautiful sandals, what you really love is the thing that Allah loves. You love that attribute of that thing that is is a reflection of a divine attribute, which is beauty, that Allah is beautiful. So when you love beauty, you're loving the, the reflection, the divine reflection of God's beauty in the world. That's what you're really attracted to. And he was acknowledging that, that that's not a bad thing. It's a good thing because Allah loves that thing. That's why he made that thing. That's why he brought beauty into the world, because Allah is beautiful. And your acknowledgement of that beauty is your recognition of that attribute in the world. That's what you're attracted to. It's, it's the beauty of Allah that's manifesting in that thing. That's what you're attracted to. But then he explained what kibr was, what arrogance was. He said, وَلَكِنَّ الْكِبْرِ بَطْرُ الْحَقِّ وَغَمْطُ النَّاسِ Arrogance is to reject the truth when it's presented to you, and it's to have contempt for people. People, ness, people. It's to have contempt for people. 